Hello, and welcome to Audio Tree Live. It is Thursday, October 26, 2017, and we are honored to have in the studio with us today, Tara Melos. Take it away whenever you're ready. Trash generator, I'm not a bad guy Trash generator, I'm not a bad guy 
Audio Tree Live with Tara Mellos. Guys, it sounds sick in here. You guys are insanely talented. <laughs> How are you guys doing? How are you guys feeling? I, I felt pretty good. Pretty good. Good. Yeah. It was just, it was nice to play some songs and just feel good about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, can, I bet. Um, so we were talking a little bit before the session, and I heard about a game you guys like to play. Uh-oh. It involves cards and maybe code names. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Just tell me a little bit about that game. Uh, I don't think any of us ever really cared about board games. Uh-huh. And then uh, a close friend of mine introduced me to the world of like nerdcore board games. Mm-hmm. And so uh, last tour we were on, we uh, we got into playing Settlers of Catan and cool. a band, uh, a game called Code Names, which mm-hmm. our friend Dave Collis played with us last time as well. Yeah. It's, it's just a weird game. Yeah. But it's just like you just dork out backstage and, you know. Just yeah. kind of like keep it pretty mellow with some board games. Yeah, definitely. The the game, the code name game that we're talking about, yeah. I think it's a pretty... I'd never heard of it until you told me about it. It's a pretty interesting game for... Well, I, I kind of equate it to, to like how we have this like... You know, we've played music together for so long mm-hmm. that you kind of have like this this instinctive thing where you kind of have can read each other's minds. And I think that's good for this game because essentially the way it works is you're paired with a partner... And you have to read their mind. You sort of have to read their mind, yeah. So, um, wow. I don't know. I feel like uh, we you might can also kind of utilize like the vernacular that you develop with somebody from being close quarters, like whether yeah. it's, whether it's in like a what you build from being in a band or romantic relationship. But yeah, that kind of like kind of telepathic, but also just mm-hmm. like you have like, certain things have like these esoteric meanings to you. Yeah, you can that plays to your advantage. Very interesting. Inside jokes as well. Inside jokes. Right. Yeah. And also apparently the ability to have ESP, mm. which, I, which I'm getting from you guys. For sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have to have ESP to like make this band sound the way it sounds. <laughs> wow. And people are always like, not that you asked this, but maybe you were going here with this. We'll but like, see. oh, how are you guys so tight? How do you like, how does it, how do you all stop at the same time at all this stuff? And it's like, I mean, we've played together for a really long time. So yeah. that's part of it. Practice is part of it. But there's definitely some like. Sympatico, right? Yeah, stuff. Yeah, and also sometimes it just doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> I did times. read that you guys, uh, before going out on tour, practice for about twelve days. And it was twelve in that interview? You said twelve, Nick. Yeah. Is it twelve? Like on the dot, you get to twelve, and you're like, we're good. Or Here's is that was that sort of like just a random number? Here's the thing: we basically kind of like for the existence of the band have all lived in like hundreds if not thousands of miles away from each other so uh it'll be the kind of thing where it's like before we go on tour or make a record we're just like okay flights what get here as soon as you can because i like to play i would play like 20 days like (laughs) i would like to play a month just because there's like so much stuff that i have to think about you know but uh yeah i think did we play for 12 days i think you guys had played twice before i got there and then we did i got there 10 days before we started tour. And it's okay. also not like, also, it's not the kind of thing where we're just like ripping for 10 hours a day <laughs> in the practice spot. Because because we don't live in the same places, practice is also like catching up and like, yeah. you know, seeing what we've been up to. But yeah. yeah, it's basically just kind of in the spot. Literally, the, I think before we left, it was whatever, a 10 day, 12 days or something, and just mm-hmm. like every day trying to get this to sound where we're happy. With yeah. It. 
And is it so you guys are sort of hanging out? Is it like starting at nine to to five? Is it like a full or is it even more hours? I we were starting at like eleven, right? And then I needed to get home to feed my dog between five and six. That's Otherwise, the problem she, with she like owning get, pets, she'd get very cranky. Yeah. So yeah, I think we were doing like eleven to Dang. five. You know, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you guys are all in separate towns then. Where you, where are each of you from? Well, we're f- so we're from Sacramento. Or? Originally, yeah. Kind of. I mean, nobody was ever from Sacramento, okay. <laughs> but that was the closest city that anybody would have ever heard about. Yeah, but yeah, nobody's nobody's there now. But you could say essentially nobody. the band started there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we're all pretty spread apart now. Oh. Well, he lives in Switzerland. Really? Straight and, up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you would lie about that. <laughs> yeah. So in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. So there's like a you know an ocean and some continent between us. Yeah. So, dang. We still somehow make this work though. Yeah. With being able to stop at the same time. Where in Switzerland do you live? Uh, in a city called Lausanne. It's a uh, western. It's sort of uh, it's the French speaking part. Yeah. So. Is it still a neutral place? The only thing that I know about Switzerland <laughs> was that it was neutral during like it was neutral during World War Two, right? That's what they say, but uh, I don't. I like to think, and I might get like some heat for this, but I <laughs> You're think gonna it was get more, haters I don't from... think it was. Uh, it, they say neutral, but it was more like opportunistic. Oh, oh, that's less. Crazy. That's less uh, altruistic. If right. it was just them being like, "Well, I guess this is what we should do." Right. It was kind of like we'll let you take those trains containing like human beings through in the middle of the night if you don't oh, bomb no. us, kind of thing. Oh, Sick. that took a sinister turn. Yeah. <laughs> and not what I expected. I don't know what I expected. Anyway. Well, just brought the whole session down. All right. Well, <laughs> good <one. laughs> we're good. No, but um, so yeah, but you, uh, I know that Nick and Nathan, you guys have been playing together since 2004, right? Yeah. About? Well, and then- even beforehand, um, we were played in another band before this that mm-hmm. uh, we met in 2000. Crazy. So, Crazy. So Dang. we've been playing music together since. That was a punk band. Yeah. yeah. That was like, uh, we all come from a skate punk and like punk rock background. Nice. So that's how he and I, I put up a flyer in a record store looking uh-huh. for a bass player for my very first band and he answered it. The rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. And then John, when did you start playing with? With these guys? Yeah, with these guys. Uh, I tried out for them in August 2008 and like oh. after like a week, it wasn't like a like cattle call tryout. It was just, we had been in touch like through email and stuff, and they came and met me at a show on a tour I was on, and then we just played together all day every day for like ten days. And mm-hmm. at the end, it was just kind of like, okay, well, we need to get some info from you to give to our manager. And <laughs> now here we are. Like, yep. Nice. Here we are. And so, now you guys can read each other's minds. What year was that? Two thousand eight. Coming on that ten year yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Nice. Just past the nine year. Ten years coming up. Are you guys gonna have a big party? I think so. I think it warrants it. No? We haven't thought we'll about see. that, but now all right. you mentioned it. Well, you have 10 months, so it's, not, it, it's all right. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for having and, us. And uh, let's roll into the next song. Okay.
the ground Song about the cow But we young It's well known on the internet and with your fans that you guys utilize uh, a lot of cool gear and a cool pedals. Um, and I was wondering if there are is any particular gear or pedals that you that you used on Trash Generator and that you used uh, uh, that you're using on this tour that you're particularly excited about. Hmm. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Let me break this down. If this is a super huge question. It's not. It's okay. easy. But the, there's a really neat thing that happened with this band. Okay. We've always used a ton of, like, stuff. Yeah. Like, from when we first started, I mean, it, it, uh, it grew, like, exponentially very quickly, mm -hmm. right? And then we, it was always just, like, junk, basically. Like, oh, scouring Craigslist or pawn shops. And yeah. we would all pull into a city and, like find the local pawn shop and we would all race to the pedal <laughs> and like someone would get to it first and there'd be hurt feelings like, man, you got all the cool stuff and, <laughs> and like whatever. So it was weird. So, but, so we did that for probably yeah. like 10 years or something. And then something just clicked somehow along the last, I don't know, four, three, four years after our last record that I guess cool people that make this stuff mm -hmm. kind of like acknowledged our band and like, Whoa, these guys are like, doing this thing with lots of sounds and this kind of different, you know, uh -huh. or whatever it is. And then just sort of like became all of our friends, like all everything that's like down here, they're basically like all of our friends that make this stuff, you know, that's which is awesome. a really neat thing. So basically we were able to make trash generator with like this crazy supply of stuff that we had never had access to. Before. Yeah. So like basically probably just about every, every like auxiliary you sound sound on the record that you hear is like a really exciting thing for us because mm -hmm. it was like whoa I could never have afforded that like I could have maybe afford a broken version of that <laughs> yeah that I found at a club or something you know what I mean yeah absolutely so having so having access to these it's sort of do you would you say that it has shaped your sound between the records uh having access to different pedals and having access to more yeah, I think so, because, yeah. it, you know, it kind of, like, opens your mind up to the different possibilities mm -hmm. of sounds you could make. Like, you know, I th think for, for both of us, like, oh, maybe, um, you know, maybe there's, like, a keyboard part, but I can envision how, how to make the same sound with yeah. all this stuff that's at my feet instead. Yeah. You know, which is, like, oh, that's something I know how to play, mm -hmm. not, like, you know, a synth or something like that. Yeah. And... uh Bear with me. I, I, I know music. I don't know that much about pedals. And so it's been really interesting sort of researching you guys and learning a lot about it. Um, so the combinations that I, I'm watching you guys make uh, of different noises, is that sort of a trial and error process? Or is that something where you're just like, this is something that I know works? Or just the thought process behind the combination of sounds that you're using? I guess it's just both. Yeah. Because it's, it, the, for us, it's like an extension of this instrument. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is like, well, or maybe you could say it's a completely separate thing. Mm -hmm. But in any case, the, this is like, you know, there's a lot of homework that goes into yeah. stuff on the floor. You know what I mean? And yeah. Th there's like, even the craft of making it all work mm -hmm. and getting it all plugged in correctly. Like, the, you know, like probably even before the, we all got to town to rehearse, for this tour and the last tour that we were on over the summer, like I spent probably maybe a full week like thinking, writing notes, like driving down the street and being like, oh, wait, I could put this there and that could be really cool yeah. for this song or something, you know? So like, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. Um, but some of it's trial and error and then it's like it's just sort of probably for both of us, it's a lot of it is second nature at this point. Mm -hmm. So you could like be driving and be and 
think about that in a way that maybe we wouldn't have before, you know, that is so, that is really interesting to me to hear the idea of, and I know that you said that, uh, it's sort of an extension of the instrument, but the way that I, that way that I personally am seeing it is like, it's sort of outside of the guitar itself. Cause it's like, it, it pushes it into some entirely different realm that, and maybe just because of my personal background where I like, I play like an acoustic guitar. So it's like, <laughs> I don't really have pedals. Yeah. So it's just to see the, the, not the limits, but the, the, to the, the extent to which the guitar can go is very interesting and fascinating to me. Yeah. Shout out to Melt Banana, Adrian Blue, King Crimson, Jimi Hendrix. Like those are all, people that have like influenced yeah. us and like I, I listen to a lot of electronic music mm-hmm. and like kind of what you're saying is a lot of that comes from stuff made on hardware computers yeah. and stuff you know and being able to apply that like Nate was saying to like oh a synth whoa it's 2017 and I can make synth sounds with my guitar now that's you know that's really awesome. a neat thing so yeah yeah it's fun it yeah, keeps absolutely. it uh just interesting for us mm-hmm. sonically you know what I mean as definitely a, like I, I've never played a set in this band plugged straight in have you done that like did your stuff mess up ever where you're like oh i gotta go or did you get it sorted or something uh well i mean there was a time in korea where (laughs) (laughs) something was going on but that's a really long story so i think we could play make this we could do songs in this band without all of it but Uh because i know you've always said that like oh you, you would prefer to not have there be a crutch pedals as a crutch I just, uh, this, uh, when I said that, it was in reference to a band <laughs> that the guy was using a combination of like four or five pedals for his tone that he used the whole time. I mean, I don't think it would be like fun, and I'm not trying to say like, oh, I don't need it or anything like that. Like, I definitely prefer having it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't be as fun, I think, to play without it. It's yeah. like, it's stim- it's like mind stimulation while we're playing. Yeah. To like, because there's so much improvisation. It's also crazy, too, because people will be like, whoa tap dancing or whatever and like i'll see a video of us or something i'll be like that doesn't seem that crazy to me but it's just because we're it's so long now yeah Yeah. so we're so deep into it that like doing this the whole time yeah and not also it's a stressful thing you know well it is kind of like zen i guess you could Mm -hmm. get there but like like kind of just being on an autopilot with it and like basically having to play it like this the whole time yeah you know what i mean and that goes back to the (laughs) practicing for 12 days like it takes a long that's the thing. It takes a while to yeah. memorize the... That's exactly yeah. right. That's part of what that all that practice is, is like, oh, man, I don't have it. I don't have, like, yeah. the muscle memory yet to, like, feel comfortable presenting this yeah. live, you know? Wow. That's very interesting to me. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> uh, all right, if you want to roll into the next two. Play us out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> Thank you. 
Audio Tree Live, and before we go into that last track, I'm just gonna say that uh, if you're in Chicago, you can check them out at Subterranean tonight, and their latest record, Trash Generator, is out now on Sergeant House Records. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for having thank us. You. Of course. Uh, also, also, just of note, there was a little whoopsie in that last song having really? to do with down here. Interesting. Because I, I was like, uh, where is it? Where is it? And I just didn't have it. Mm -hmm. So you'll the crowd will hear a whoopsie in there, which is fine. But that's I think just, maybe you only will know that the, there was a whoopsie. Some of the we there's some weirdos out there that <laughs> will the know dweebs. for sure. <laughs> I mean, you could tell there's there's some weird people that are into this band. So <laughs> wasn't apologies. gonna say anything. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Of course. Always were one of those kids Never see the 
Audio Tree Live with Tara Mellos. Once again, if you're in Chicago, you can check them out at Subterranean Tonight. And if you're not in Chicago, go to taramellos.net to see when they'll be in your city. I want to thank the audio engineers for making it sound pretty and the camera and lighting crew for making it look pretty. And Tara Mellos for everything you do. <laughs> thank well, you all for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much, everybody.